Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another character guide. And today we're going to be doing Nat Love from the film The Harder They Fall. So actually I was going to do a historical video on Nat Love, but it was really hard to find any corroborating stories to exactly what happened in his life. So basically this is a real historical character, it's just not super clear exactly what he did and all what he participated in. In some tales he's uh, associated with a bunch of criminals, in other ones he's associated with lawmen, and uh, purporting from his own stories it's apparently both. So it's hard to say, but uh, in the film he is uh, presumably the, the primary character. And uh, this is my attempt at creating him as best as I can in Red Dead Online. So we're going to be doing weapons, outfit, and the facial customization to make him look as much as you can like Nat Love in Red Dead Online. So with all that in mind, if you like this video or you find yourself enjoying it at any point, be sure to click that like button. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bell because that's the only way to stay up to date on everything I release here and it helps the channel out immensely. So with all that in mind, let's dive on in and start it off with weapons. All right, so the first weapon that I think we can associate with him is a Cattleman revolver in the game or a Colt single action army revolver in real life and in the film. So I'm pretty sure that this is his primary weapon, the one that he keeps in his holster on his uh, right hip. Uh, it's a quick draw variant of a Colt single action army revolver and I think that it's all black and steel. It's hard for me to tell because I haven't been able to find great pictures and whenever it's being used in the scene, it, it varies. Sometimes it looks a little bit lighter, sometimes it looks a little bit darker. So I think the best way to try to do it is to do it just like this. So I put the ebony grip on it because it appears to have the hardened plastic uh, black grips on it. Uh, then I did it like this with no carvings, no engraving, short barrel, improved rifling, improved sights, then black and steel for the barrel, cylinder, and frame, and then brown steel for the hammer, sight, and trigger. All right, and so the other handgun that's pretty closely associated with him because he uses it in a couple scenes and has it in a lot of the promotional art or uh, stills from the film is a number three Schofield. So the best way to imitate that is with the Schofield revolver here in the game. You're going to want to have the long barrel because his has a long barrel, ironwood grips, and mahogany varnish on those grips, no carvings, no engravings, and then the metal should be just like this, with the barrel, cylinder, frame, and hammer all being brown steel, and then the sight and the trigger being iron. And of course, this will cost you 10 gold bars. I think it's a solid looking revolver, and it's definitely a little bit more unique than most of the guns in the film, because basically everybody else uses the Colt Single Action Army Revolver. So if you're looking for a more uh, unique gun to pair with your uh, Nat Love character, you just like the Schofield better, then this is the gun to pair with it, because he does use a gun that looks almost exactly like this in multiple scenes. So uh, that's the second gun, but there's also a third gun to associate with Nat Love. All right, and so the final weapon to associate with uh, Nat Love from The Harder They Fall is a double barrel shotgun because again, he uses it and is seen in promotional art and stills from the film holding a double barrel shotgun. And I think if you do it like this, it looks almost exactly like the one that he uses in the film. So you give it the long barrel, uh, no wrap on it, no carvings, no engravings, mahogany varnish on the stock, and then the barrel in the trigger guard should be blued steel and the frame, hammer, sight, and trigger should all be brown steel. And it looks pretty dang close to the shotgun that he's seen using or at least holding in the film. Uh, so that is all for weapons. Like I said, we have a short-barreled Cattleman revolver, a long-barreled Schofield revolver, and then a double-barrel shotgun made up just like I've showed you here, and you've got all the guns associated with Nat Love. That being said, he doesn't appear to have more than one holster, and like I said, I'm pretty sure the one in his holster is a Cattleman revolver or a Colt single action in real life. How you uh, equip all these weapons is going to be up to you, but it will affect the look of the character. That's all for guns. Let's move on to the outfit. All right, and here we have the Nat Love outfit, and I think it turned out pretty dang good. It looks a lot like his does from the film. Uh, a lot of the details are even like 100% perfect. Uh, the only issue is the coat's a little bit less red than his is in the film. Like his has a, it's brown, but it has a slight reddish tint. This was as close as I could come. Uh, but with all that in mind, let's just uh, start going through the items and I'll show you how to make this outfit. So the hat that I chose to use because I think it looks the best with this outfit is the clean black variant of the stalker hat. It's approximately the same size, shape, and style. Plus it sits lower on the brow and that's how he keeps his in the film. So I think this hat's the best. Uh, that being said, there are two other options that would also work. If you have it, the Robero hat works as well. I don't think it works uh, quite as good as the uh, Stalker hat because Nat Love's hat is a little bit crimped on the brow, whereas this one's basically perfectly cylindrical. Uh, so this one also works, but not quite as well. Then lastly, we have uh, this this uh, fourth variant of the Garwood hat. Now this is a Bounty Hunter hat. Uh, this one looks a lot like his, and I would probably like it the most. Like it would probably be my number one pick. If it didn't have the band of silver discs around the top, because his does not have that, and it definitely changes the look of the hat. That being said, uh, the shape 
shape is almost perfect. The brim bends down almost exactly the same as his does. It's thin. Uh, the only thing is that the crown isn't quite as crimped as his, but it comes real close. So this hat also works. Of course, to get this one, you need to have the bounty hunter roll and you need to level it up to the point where you unlock the Garwood outfit and then buy the one that includes this hat. But yeah, so that's hats. Like I said, I like the stalker the best, but the row barrel or the Garwood hat would also work. Then for the bandana, I went through quite a few, but I think the red trimmed bandana works the best. It's probably the brightest out of all the red bandanas and his bandana in the film is very bright. So uh, basically any red bandana would work, but I think this one works the best. Then for the coat, I uh, went with the fifth variant of the Brakeman jacket. Like I said, I was trying to imitate the look of his jacket as best as I could since it's kind of an iconic thing. And this one I think does the best for a couple reasons, one of which being it's almost exactly the same color. It's got sort of a leathery look like his does in the film. And this one has buttons on both sides. So when this jacket is buttoned up, it would have two rows of buttons. And that's the same as his. His has two rows of buttons. I mean, it's open, so you can't see that, but there are buttons on both sides. So I think this variant of the Brakeman jacket is the best option to imitate his. If you don't have it, can't get it, or don't like this jacket, there are a few other options. This variant of the roller jacket, I think is way too light, but it it's, I guess it's a little bit more vivid. So maybe you'd like this one better. I don't, but it's also an option. And this reddish variant of the hunter jacket is an option. It's again, uh, decently close to the color. It's maybe a little bit too red. If it was a little bit closer to brown, this one would be better. And it has the wrong style, but it's also kind of leatherish and shiny. So it would also work. But like I said, I don't think it's quite as good. So that's uh, all the options for the coats for this outfit. Then for his shirt, he wears a bluish gray shirt uh, for the majority of the film. So I think the best option is this blue everyday shirt. There's a couple gray ones, but it is closer to blue than gray. So I think that uh, this light blue one is the best option for his shirt. For weapon equipment, we have the black sharpshooter gun belt. Uh, and like I said, he does not appear to ever wear another holster, so I don't know where he keeps his other gun. Probably tucked into his belt or something, or maybe in his boot. It's hard to say with Western characters. Uh, but this is, I think, the closest we can come to the style and appearance of the belt that he wears in the film. So yeah, the black sharpshooter gun belt with no offhand holster. Then for the pants, we actually have a pair of pants that match his basically perfectly in the black buckskin pants. Now these ones are the option because A, he wears black or really dark blue pants for the majority of the film, and B, the style of them actually have this like button up flap in the front section. Uh, it's exactly like his in the film. So these are the pants that I think are the best option for this outfit. And then lastly for footwear, we have these stove type square toe boots and we're gonna use the sixth variant, these clean black ones, and we should be wearing them Texas style over top of the pants because that's how he wears them in the film. And so there we have the entire outfit in its entirety. Like I said, comparing them side by side, I think it looks a lot like him, and I think it looks very good. I think this is a nice looking outfit. It's well balanced. All of the styles match together. And I think we were able to accurately recreate, like, recreate or copy each of the items for his outfit. None of these are really what I would consider very wrong. So, in this one rare instance, we have an outfit that almost exactly matches the character from the film. So that's all for the outfit. Uh, let's move on to hair and facial hair, and then we'll do the facial customization. Alright, so for hair, we're gonna do the black color of the short curly afro. It's uh, pretty dang close to his hairstyle from the film, or at least as close as we can come with the limited options here in Red Dead Online. For facial hair, as usual, we run into a problem. He does have facial hair. Uh, he's got basically the full mustache into a beard goatee, and then it runs up along the sides up to his ears in sideburns. We unfortunately do not have a hairstyle that is short enough uh, for a full beard to match that, uh, but we come pretty close if we do with the chin curtain. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the facial hair for the, uh, for the mustache or the chin, but it helps imitate the look a little bit better and it's nice and short because if we go with the reverend which is the next best option it's just too long and it screws up the look of the character so the chin curtain is the best we can do for facial hair and then to try to fill in the fact that we don't have any facial hair for his uh, mustache or chin we do some facial stubble so that's all for hair and facial hair let's move on to the character customization and so here we have the character creation so uh you can see that i went with the 17th heritage then i did the middle skin tone option for that heritage uh we went with 40 for the age uh possibly a little bit older than the actor actually is. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it helps uh, match his appearance the best. Then for body build, I did average. I considered athletic, but I think average fits it a little bit better. Athletic's just a little bit too skinny. Um, so for the eye color, I did the 14th variant, the dark brown. And for eyebrows, I went with the slight style. So now I'm just going to go through all these sliders because all the rest of them are custom. And so if you want to follow along and make your character look like this, it's relatively easy. You just, you know, copy the position that I have on the sliders. If I'm going too fast at any point, feel free to pause the video or of course go into the video settings and slow down the playback speed as much as necessary. So let's just dive on in and get to it.
And so there we have the full character appearance, and I think it looks decently like him. Pretty much good in uh, every way. Uh, the only thing that kind of throws it off is the fact that we can't hit the facial hair as well as we could. I, I feel like if we could do the exact facial hairstyle he had, it would match a lot better. But other than that, I think it turned out pretty dang good. So that is where we're going to end the video. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.